Uh, well, don't don't blame the audience. Don't berate the audience. And a comedy audience doesn't come to the show to hate you. Okay, comics. A comedy audience is not like you know. Let's go to the comedy show tonight and ruin that comic's life. Hot breath. What's goody comics? Welcome to Hot Breath, the show where you learn comedy from the pros. I'm comedian Joel Byers. After 10 years in this game and over 300 interviews with the top comics in the industry, I'm here to share with you all the tips I had to learn the hard way so you don't have to. This is a great question, Sandy, and connecting with the audience is something that I will still have to be mindful of and be listening to the audience because it, it can be the difference between you killing and bombing in a lot of ways is you being... Uh, sensitive to the audience and how they're responding to you. You know, it's a conversation. Stand-up is a conversation. It's not a dialogue or a monologue. Excuse me, it's a dialogue. So you say something, then the audience laughing is their response. Give them time to laugh, and then you go into your next joke. A big mistake young comics make is talking through the laughs. They don't give the audience time in the dialogue, in the conversation. They don't give the audience time to speak. So sometimes if you're not connecting to the audience, it's because you're not listening to the audience. And a lot of times as younger comics, something that young comics will do is we're just thinking about the next joke. We're like, all right, I did that one. All right, what's next on the set list? Okay, I did that one. What's next? And you're, you're not even listening to the audience. But the more prepared you are, the more confident you are in your performance and on your stage experience which takes time but also practice and repetition off stage the more you'll be able to listen to the audience and be sensitive to how they're responding because I, I can tell you from personal experience you know coming up in Atlanta I was known as white boy Joel so I would get booked on shows just as the white guy they just needed diversity or an alibi in case the cops showed up or whatever so I remember I did a show at Uptown Comedy Corner here in Atlanta and I was doing well and then I said I said something like I have race jokes but I said something like I think I improvised something racial and it came off weird but I just kept going I wasn't listening to the audience I just kept going and then like two minutes later you could feel the audience like pulling away from you and I remember I felt it and I and I just stopped for a second. And I honestly, like there's a table on the front at Uptown. There was a table where people could sit, but this was like a 12:30 show. There were not people at the front table. There were just some high and drunk people scattered about who wandered in for the 12:30 show. And I leaned on that table and I just went, where did I lose y'all? What happened to us? And I kind of, I made a funny moment of it. It was like, we were so close and doing so well. What happened to us? And they all just kind of, kind of giggled and kind of like, they were interested again. They weren't being like, just, oh, whatever. And texting, they were like, oh, what's happening here? Because not all silence is bad silence. There's a difference between a bombing silence and them listening silence and engaging silence. And then I was like, oh, it's, it's probably... It's that weird race comment I made earlier, wasn't it? It's like, yeah, I didn't even mean to do that. I improvised that. And I should know as a white man, don't improvise in such environments. I should just ha be happy to be here, that y'all let me in here. And I kind of made fun of the fact I was the only white guy in the area code. And who am I to even think I could say something like that? And I basically addressed the elephant in the room. I addressed that what I was doing wasn't working. Maybe this is the reason why. This is actually something I heard Dane Cook talk about before is he was talking about early on in his career, he would have those moments where it wasn't working, like the audience wasn't responding and he literally would just ask them. He's like, where did we go wrong? Where did I miss you guys? Let's let's figure this out together. And he was like, it's not funny, but it's real. And that's how you really connect with an audience is that real. So if you're not connecting with the audience, ask them really genuinely ask the audience like where did i miss you what what is i've worked hard on these jokes what's missing right now is, is it my delivery is it the writing is it you uh well don't don't blame the audience don't berate the audience and a comedy audience doesn't come to the show to hate you okay comics a comedy audience is not like you know let's go to the comedy show tonight and ruin that comic's life no they want to come and laugh so don't berate the audience 
But that being said, I have done shows where they do come to laugh and jingle their keys at you and boo you and all that. But that's beside the point. Overall, fans and comedy goers come to laugh and they want to laugh. And if, if it's missing, they feel it too. So address it. Just be genuine and curious about it. And it'll be scary at first, but the more you do it, the easier it'll get. And that's just a fun tip that's helped me to become more present and real on stage and to help me to listen to the audience more. I hope you found that helpful. This clip you just watched is actually from our Q&A we do in our Facebook group where we also do a daily joke writing contest. So if you want to write more jokes and connect with more comics, click the link in the description of this video and I'll see you there. We got some good, good, goodins, don't we?